Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got a very cool, fun, and easy craft to do. It's very modular. You can use these things as scatter or NPCs. So come along with me. I'm going to show you how we do it right after the drop. To start this project, we're going to need some XPS foam. Uh, just cut yourself a big old hunk of some half inch, cut it in some vertical strips, and just start carving away and make it a rock, uh, slightly crystalline shape. Nothing too crazy. Cut the sides, make sure you get those edges. And then grab yourself a pen and go to town. Design some uh, faces on these rocks. I'm going to do some old wizard looking faces, big beards, big bushy eyebrows, pronounced noses, big features. I recommend the, uh, the pink XPS. I used to work with a green. That was the sheet I started with. Someone told me it didn't matter what color, and uh, boy oh boy was that wrong. This pink stuff is so much funner to mess around with. I couldn't, I don't know if I could do this project with the green. So uh, the dollar store stuff would work well with this as well. It holds a, a very good line. Once done with the face, I decided to add some random runes, scribble some uh, symbols in there. Or if uh, you've actually got a language you use for your campaign and you want these stones to be from a certain people or a certain ancient civilization, that's your uh, chance to really personalize these. Don't forget that tin foil to give it that stone-like texture. I'm real happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to get some paint on it. Of course, why stop at one? I did four of these magnificent fellas, each a little different in style. Um, that way I could, if I use them as NPCs, uh, each could have its own personality if I wanted. And perhaps the players like to deal with one, one of the stones in particular over the others. Fender washers for bases. I'm just gonna hot glue them down. I uh, hot glue them on some parchment paper, and that way, when that hot glue dries in the or leaks through and dries in the center, I can just peel it right up off of that parchment paper. Most of the stones use a one-inch fender washer for a base, but a couple of them, like this big fella, need a one and a quarter inch. Then it's just a little white PVA glue. Uh, take a terrain brush and spread it around. And then we're going to hit it with some craft sand flock. Just dunk them. Well, dunk and flick, right? <laughs> Here they are, all four. And they're ready for that uh, black magic base coat. Half black acrylic paint half matte Mod Podge. This is going to give them a base coat and that Mod Podge is going to strengthen and harden that foam and help protect your craft. I decided to get fun and crazy with the painting scheme and thought like a, a blue purple. I think my daughter's gotten her hair dyed in this color a couple of times. They call it ombre. Is that right? I think that's right. I'm going to do the bottoms in turquoise. I'm going to do the tops in this violet color. And then I'm going to do a very rough blend. Try to paint these while they're still wet. So that violet and that turquoise kind of blend in the middle. Hey there, fella. Looking good. 
Oh, you're looking good too, buddy. Stone roll call. <laughs> the third guy. I like him. And number four. Perfect. The ground's going to get uh, Americana's Mississippi mud. There they are all together looking great. Now we're going to do washes. Uh, this is where it gets a little expensive. I use my blue and purple washes from Army Painter. The purple on the violet side, of course. The blue on the turquoise side or the bottom. And I actually use the washes to help get a nice, uh, maybe even improve the blend from the painting. So don't stress about the painting. If you don't get as good a blend as you want, uh, Go ahead and utilize those washes. They're going to help uh, cover a weak blend up and make it look much better. If you don't want to use expensive washes, I would say you could pick up uh, some ink or even just um, a darker blue and a darker purple and water them down a bit. And you should get a similar effect. But hey, I had the blue, I had the purple, why not? I'm in love with this blue wash. Look at that. Fantastic. Here they are with the wash on. Very happy. Now I'm gonna go back in with a granite gray and dry brush those edges. Perfect. He gets that stone feeling once again, while still maintaining that really cool blue, purple, blended color. Oh, bird break. Everyone say hi to Ren. Say hi, Bren. <laughs> it had been a while, so I thought I'd put a little Wren in the video. Thank you, buddy. Time for some more flocking. Once again, I'm gonna use that white PVA, spread it around, and uh, I don't wanna dunk in my, uh, my grass flock or my my turf flock, so instead I'm going to sprinkle. I got this tub of it from Hobby Lobby, I think, for $9 almost a, a year ago. Maybe, no, maybe two years ago. And I'm, st I'm still working on my first one. So it was a great buy. And when you're ready to up your craft and start using some turf, I recommend you, you make the leap. That one $10 investment is gonna last you for so many crafts. Uh, but I wasn't happy with just the turf. I wanted to really dress these up, make them look like they had some vegetation and vines growing up. So I broke out a package of moss, picked a few prime pieces and then super glued them up the edges in a very believable and realistic way. Have fun with this step. This is a really fun, creative, artistic step and you're really going to be able to enhance the look of these little stones with these vines here. So take your time, have some fun, find just the right piece and uh and go crazy after that i got my clump foliage and this is going to help decorate the bases and make the transition from turf to stone 
look less craft and more ancient standing stones. I use hot glue with the turf. I find it holds a little better and I like to pinch and squish it down while the glue dries and uh, ultimately it'll spring back up. These were some dried flowers given to me by the missus. Uh, I thought they'd look cool as little bits of vegetation uh, sprouting at the base of the stones. So here you can see I've got a pinch, put it in a little hot glue, and then cover up its base with another piece of clump foliage. And in my bag of moss, I've got this lichen on this uh, tree branch. So I just grabbed a piece off and uh, hot glued it. And we got little pops of color there down at the bottom. I, I really like it. And then just to keep everything really nailed down, I'm gonna do some white PVA, really watered down, and then I'm gonna brush it over everything and that's gonna lock everything in. And that's the final step for this great project. After it's done, uh, you're gonna get the continuation of Tin Lee and the Shamrock Boys story from last video. So uh, thanks for watching. Although Tin Lee's calculations were correct, she miscalculated one thing. The statue of the ancient king came to life, and she was not prepared. It wounded her mortally, and the Shamrock boys fled into the forest. They found a path and a clearing. Where were they headed? Were they being led? Four gruesome, living trees stood before them. It looks like the little boys have lost their lady. Silence, Spring. You know we have called them to us. We need their help as much as they need ours. Summer speaks true. Even I and Winter agree. You waste time, Spring. Move aside and let them through. Well, you're no fun at all. Fine. What do we do now, Captain? I don't know, boys, but Tinley's hurt real bad. We gotta push forward. Watch them strange trees. Captain, was them trees talking? Oh man, this place gives me the creeps. By the gods, they're looking at me. Oh, gee, Captain, I don't think we can get through these things. For Tinley, boys, push forward. And as the Shamrock boys moved down the path, the four seasons moved out of the way and let them pass. And they finally saw who had summoned them here. The captain brought forth Tinley in his arms and got down on one knee and pleaded to the stones as the Shamrock boys gathered around. Be at peace. You are among friends. Friends. Tinley has friends. called out to us. To us. We can heal her. The captain was filled with a sense of hope and awe, and tears began to stream down his face. The Shamrock boys gathered in closely, all pleased to have found this sacred place to heal their precious sorceress, Tinley. Will the ancient standing stones save Tinley? Well, you're just going to have to watch my uh, my videos and find out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you like what I'm doing, uh, like the video down below. 
Do you like this whole story thing I'm trying at the end of the videos? I'd love to hear a comment. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Like each other. Love each other. And craft on.